Answers are on the back already for that thing. They're already there. So I'm um, wanting to show you how to do them. So that handout, let me get my own copy of the handout. So that handout, so absolute, absolute value handout. <clears throat> that thing will be due on Wednesday. So do on Wednesday, turn in, turn in. You can um, attach, you know, what's it called, um, staple, staple, um, separate paper if you want. You can squeeze it all in in that paper. It's fine with me. Whatever it takes for you. I would encourage you just to do it right now. I'm going to solve about half of them in the next 40 minutes, basically, right now. I'm going to work through about half of this handout right now. So if you want to just scribble them on a, another piece of paper as we go and then just staple it to this thing or, or not, you can just have separate paper. I don't care. One way or the other, I just need the work. I need to see the work. That's how you'll get credit when you turn it in to me on Wednesday. The after most, this will be one of the only times I'll actually collect something physically out of your hands. Everything else is always on the computer. I just don't like the way Math Excel did this, um, did this section. So I... I don't like it, so I just want to do it myself. So that's that's why we're doing the handout thing. So I will physically collect this from you on Wednesday and type your grades into Math Excel. So however you want to do it, I just need the work. Don't just give me a sheet of paper with answers, right? I won't. How will I know you didn't just look on the back here and copy down all the answers? We all have all the answers. I don't need answers. I need work. That's how I'll know you did the work. I want to know how we got to the answer. That's what I need to know to know you really worked on it, right? So I need to see work. I don't need to see answers. You want to put it on here? You can squeeze it all in. That's fine. One other paper, that's fine. It's two. Whatever works for you. All right. Let's take a look. So what are we talking about? What's absolute value? Well, let me start by just um, reasoning logically with you. If, you if, if I said, hey, guys, I'm thinking of a number in my head. Well, first of all, wait. Before I let me back up one more step. You know what absolute value does. Thing. What, what's the absolute value negative three? Positive three. It just makes things positive, right? We all know that, right? It seems so simple. It's going to be kind of confusing. This is one of the hardest parts of this first exam, anyway. It seems so simple. I mean, really? Absolute values makes it positive. How can that be hard? Well, well, let, let's start this way. What if I said, hey, guys, I'm thinking of a number in my head. This is in my head. All right? Um, I am. I'm thinking of a number in my head. I really am right now. And, um, and the answer's coming out seven. I was thinking the answer's coming out seven. It doesn't mean that's what I was thinking in my head. So I'm thinking of a number in my head, and then the absolute value of the number in my head is coming out of 7. So what do we know about the number in my head? It's the absolute value of 7. Negative 3. If the absolute value of some number in my head is coming out positive 7, what could the number in my head be? It could be, it could be either negative 7, seven or, or seven. negative 7. Right. Right? Does that make sense logically? It could be either what? I was thinking of negative 7. The absolute value negative 7 comes out 7. But I could have been thinking of regular 7. Positive 7. Normal 7, right? Because that would come out 7 also. Two options notice. Two options notice. Take clear note of that. Math is the science of patterns. Math is the science of patterns. You're, you're taking math class. Well, what math will do for you anyway, whether you want it or not, <laughs> math will help you get a degree. But also... Math will help you think better about patterns, how to follow them, describe them, write them, predict them. That's what math, math is just patterns. That's all it is. So look carefully at that pattern. Look at that logical pattern and follow. What just happened there? I said the absolute value of a number equaled, you know, seven or whatever. And, we, and, and then the next line, we all agree logically that that means that number is seven or that number is negative seven, right? And that's true. There's the pattern right there. I'm, I'm going to do nothing more on those first eight questions than follow that pattern. But that's easier said than done. If you haven't taken a lot of math classes, your ability to follow patterns very carefully is not, not yet where it will be eventually. So, so let me help. I'll, that's my job to help you with that. But really, that's it. I mean, if you're a perfect pattern follower, I would just say do that on questions one through eight, and it'll work perfect. Mm -hmm. To see what that's, what would I, let's, let me help you observe what that pattern is saying. That's saying, that if you have the absolute value of anything, it doesn't have to just be a number. You see, that's the deal with a pattern. A pattern works for little things or big things. It's the same pattern. So if you have the absolute value of something, look at your handout. It could be like number one, absolute value of 5x. 
or like uh, number five, absolute value of 3x plus 4. It doesn't matter how big the thing is inside the absolute values or how little, whatever, just the pattern. So whatever you have inside the absolute value, and if you have something on the other side, let's call it the right side. Let's, let's call this the inside. How about that? Call it whatever you want. Call it Joe. But it's just, it's just, I'm just showing you the pattern. If you have the absolute value of some inside thing equals some thing on the right, do this. And it's true logically. What? Do what? What exactly? Well, notice on step one, it's a lot about observation. You're kind of detective or something. Look close. The left side has, the, the top line has absolute values. On the second line, we have removed them. That's gigantic. They're gone on the second line. That's the whole ball game, basically. This is, this is correct absolute value removal. That's what we're doing, right? No absolute values here. Notice, right? We yanked them. That's what we're talking about right now, is how do you faithfully, truly, logically remove absolute value signs. So on the next line, I'm going to have no absolute value signs because we know logically, if the absolute value is some inside thing equals the right side, then that inside thing could have been the right side, right? Just been the right side, right? Normal right side, and then what? Or, or, the inside, right? Wasn't the number what was inside? Equals negative of the right side. Sorry, I'm really scribbling today. Is that, is that making, isn't that, isn't this and this the same thing, just with different words? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? That's what this is, that's what we reasoned logically. If you're thinking of something in the absolute value of it's seven, that inside thing is seven or negative seven. So that works for big expressions or little. If you have something inside absolute values, you yank them off and say that inside could be the normal right side, right? The normal seven or the negative of the right side, the negative of the seven. And that works for simple numbers or big expressions. It's all the same pattern. But notice first off that what I just used here, what I started with right here, the absolute value was alone. It didn't have like a, a five absolute value um, or, or, or three. But you know, other things were not outside of the absolute value, were they? This pattern says if you have absolute value and something inside only, nothing outside, then you can yank them and that inside will be seven or negative, positive or negative of the right side. Nothing outside. So that means I can't use that logic until I first get rid of the stuff outside. So look like at number two. Look at number two. See how there's a two, a seven outside of the absolute value and a minus three? You got to scoot those guys to the other side first before you apply this logic. You see the pattern I'm saying? Because this logic applies when there's an absolute value alone. Then you can do this logical step. Not in some other situation. When absolute value is alone, with no numbers or letters or anything outside of it, on its side. It wants to be alone on its side. You can have anything you want on the right side. It doesn't matter. But on the absolute value side, he must be alone. Right? So that's my first step. So let me write out some steps now. From all that observation, here would be my steps. So steps four, absolute value equal. And by the way, you might notice on the handout, the first eight questions are all absolute value equals problems. And then starting at number nine and the rest of the way, there's a bunch of greater than, less than. That's a different ball game. We'll get to that. So right now, I'm just explaining how you're going to do the first eight questions. And then we're going to do about half of them. So this is questions number one through eight, they're all absolute value with an equal sign. Not greater than, less than. We'll get to that. So what do you do? Step number one, you've got to get the absolute value alone. That's the first step. You have to get that absolute value alone, right? Why? Because that's the logic we observe. That's the pattern we observe there. If the absolute value is alone on the left, then you can yank them off, positive, negative, right side. And then step two, you remove the absolute value symbols, right? It's the removal stage. Equal, so then you go inside. Equal positive the right side. Or, you write two statements. Inside, without absolute values anymore. Equals negative the right side, as I just wrote out. That's it. And they just solve them. They just go dot, dot, dot. Just solve them like normal. From there, it's just normal solving. Nothing, nothing special. That's the special step. That's logically what we observed is true of absolute values, huh? 
So that's the pattern we follow. So let's try that. Let's see what I'm talking about. Let's try like um, number one. So question, I'm doing number one from the handout right now. It says, so you can go ahead and write this down and give it to me. I'll do about half of them. So absolute value of 5x equals 40. Okay, so according to these steps, let's do step one. Step one, get the absolute thing alone. It already is. It already is. There's nothing to do on step one. The absolute value is all there is on the left side. Number two will have some steps to do in step one to get it alone. That's already done. So, so we go right on to step two here on question number one. Go right on to step two. What is step two? It's the removal step, right? So we're going to yank off the absolute values. So there will be no absolute values any longer on step two. So I'm just going to write the 5x, no more absolute values, equal positive or just regular, the right side, or the 5x is negative, the right side. You write two statements because that's reasonable. That's true. That's logical, right? If the absolute value of 5x is 40, then that 5x could be 40 or negative 40. Either way, it would be true. And then you just solve them. How do you solve 5x equals? Now that the absolute values are out of there, it's just a regular problem now, or two, two regular problems now. So how do you solve this one? Let's divide by 5, huh? Right? It's not, it's not a subtract 5 because that 5 is right up against the x's times time. Huh? So let's divide that 5. And so x is 8. Divide the 5 here. Or x is negative 8. We're done. Those are the two answers. Look in the back. Sure enough, number 1, the answer is back there. 8 and negative 8. There they are. Do you have Renee. to have both equations on your piece of paper? I mean, if you know it's going to be a positive and a negative, can you just state that? I'm okay with a couple shortcuts here and there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is that good? more complicated you want? Both. Right. When, I, when, it, when it's steps where I know I couldn't take that step, then I, I need to, yeah, there's got to be okay. steps there. Yeah. So 8 or negative 8. So, um, so look, at, look and see it's true. 8 and negative 8. Either one plugged in would make that true, wouldn't that? Right? Because this would be the absolute value 5 times 8, absolute value 40, would be 40. And the absolute value 5 times negative 8, absolute value negative 40, would also be 40. Those are both the x values that make that thing true. And they're the only x values that make that thing true. Does that make sense? Let's go to number 2. So number 2. 7, absolute value w minus 3 is 11. So, step 1. What's step 1? Yeah, get the absolute value thing alone. So this time, I do have to do step one, right? The absolute value. So before you can remove it faithfully, truly, you have to get it alone. So what's my first step to get the absolute values alone? Just add that three, right? Just add that three. That's correct. Just add that three over. And we get seven. Now, just, just normal equation solving here. Nothing... Nothing amazing or fancy. One more step, right? What do I do to... Can I subtract the 7? I can't, huh? What do I got to do? Got to divide, right? Does everybody see I got to divide the 7 because it's times? It's right, up, it's right up against absolute values multiply. Divide the 7. So value is 2. That's all step 1 work. That's all working to get the absolute value alone. Now, look back. We're not done. We have one more step. But look back over here. See, on this one, um, why didn't I... Let me ask you this. Why didn't I do that back here on question number? Why didn't I, like, divide by the 5 right away? Well, because that 5 was part of the inside. I don't get rid of inside things until the removal has happened. Right? Everybody seeing that? Right? I only get rid of outside things. Why? Because I'm trying to get the absolute value alone, meaning get rid of stuff outside of him. Right? So in step one, that's why I did not divide by the five. There, I did it later. I did divide by the five later after the removal. Huh. So inside stuff we get rid of after the removal. Outside stuff we get rid of right away. Right? So right here, I'm getting rid of the outside stuff right away. Get that absolute value alone, and now step two comes the removal step. Removal and equal to the positive of the right side equal to negative the right side. So we remove. So I yank off the absolute values. Say bye-bye absolute values equal to positive 2 or negative 2. And there's really nothing more to do. We're done. 2 or negative 2 are the two answers. That's what the back says. That's correct. You can check it. Right? You can put 
two or negative two in there, and it'll work on that. Good so far. All right, stop me if you want to talk about it. Let's go to number three. So try number three. Let me let you work ahead. You got number three there in your handout. Try number three. <laughs> number three. So value of m plus five plus nine is sixteen. Okay, what's first step? Mm -hmm. Yeah, get the absolute alone. Get rid of the outside stuff, huh? So, so don't do the. Don't remove right now. Don't remove and go sixteen negative sixteen. That would not be true. That would not be according to the step. Step one says get rid of outside stuff first. Get rid of outside. So I'm going to, here's the wall. I'm going to subtract the 9, right? On that, so we get absolute value. M plus 5 is 7. So we got rid of the outside stuff. That's step one. And step two is the removal. Positive the right side and negative the right side, right? So I'm going to yank them off. So removal, removal, and we go the M plus 5 is positive 7 or the M plus 5 is negative 7. Is that good? So I got rid of the outside stuff. I got rid of that 9. And then I do the removal, and then I get rid of the inside stuff. So get rid of the outside stuff, removal, inside stuff. So now, get rid of the inside stuff, subtract 5, and over here, subtract 5. Both, both equations, same thing. Oh. And m equals, what does m equal there? 2 and negative 12. Yeah, 7 minus 5 is 2, and over here, negative 12. Those are the two answers. 2 and negative 12. Is that good? That's what the thing says, right? Yeah, 2 and negative 12. You can tilt around. Let's, go, let's check this one. You don't have to. I mean, it's not necessary, but just think it might be instructive. So if you put a 2 there, back in the originals, 2 really make that thing true? I got it. This was a 9 here. Um, is that true? 2 plus 5 is 7. Absolute value 7 to 7. 7 plus 9, 16. Yeah, that's true. Okay, but how about the negative 12? Is that one really? Is that right? Make this negative 12. What's negative 12 plus 5? Negative 7. Then the absolute value? Positive 7 plus 9 is 16. It's beautiful. It's like it just knows what to do. Well, it's because we follow logic. Does that make sense? Those are the true answers, aren't they? Right? Everybody see that one? You may write it out. Minus 12 plus 5. See, it's right. Because this is negative 7. And absolute value negative 7 is just regular 7. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Those are really the right answers. Those are the two things that make it true. All right, because we follow the logical pattern. All right, number four. Number four has got a trick. Let me, let me help you with the trick. So what if I said, hey, guys, I'm thinking of a number. In my head. Here's the number in my head. Thinking of a number in my head. And the absolute value. What does absolute value do to something? Makes it positive. So I get this number in my head. I do the absolute value of it. And it comes out negative 2. It can't. Yeah, what's in my head? Wrong stuff. Yeah, wrong stuff. N n nothing right. That can't be. I'm confused. That can't be. You can't have a number and do the absolute value and it comes out negative. That's the whole point of absolute value. It makes it positive. An absolute value cannot be. So there's no way. There's no number that could be in my head truly and me thinking right. Right? There's no number whose absolute value is negative. If they put negative on the, on the right side, just stop. No solution. No, honestly, I'm not going to put that on the test. That's no solution. It's the only one. It's no solution. You can't have negative on there. There's no way absolute value can equal negative. Not even going to do any steps. It's impossible. Nothing could ever make that true. That makes sense? That's just a silly one. It's not going to be on the test. Let's go back to normal stuff now. 
So um, now number five, six, seven, and eight, all of a sudden they're bigger. But remember, just follow the same pattern. It'll all be fine. It'll, it'll work. It'll all be good. It'll work out. Let me, let me do number five with you. So number five, absolute value, 3x plus 4 equals absolute value. X. It doesn't really matter that there's two absolute values instead of one. It's, just, it's all the same stuff. How do, how do I know? Well, think real life, guys. What if I told you absolute value of some number is the absolute value 7? So what could that number be? Well, what could be in here to make that, if I said, I'm thinking of some number, and the absolute value comes out the absolute value 7? 7 or negative 7. Still could be to 7 or negative 7. It doesn't really matter. It's still the same thing. You can be positive or negative in an absolute value or two absolute values. Whatever. It logically makes no difference. This is just 7 over here, isn't it? So you do the same thing as saying this. Yeah, maybe I should just say it that way. The, this and this are the same. Because the absolute value 7 is just 7. That's not doing anything, right? It doesn't matter that they give us two absolute values instead of one. It just still means you can be positive or you can be negative, and the absolute values will make you all equal in the end, right? That's all it means. Logically, it's identical, isn't it? So I follow the very same pattern. Nothing new needs to be done here, but it's maybe a little more tricky to follow that pattern. Now, what's the pattern? Well, step one, let's, let's be real clear, real careful, real slow with what the pattern is. Step one says what? Remove outside stuff. Remove outside stuff. There is none. There's none. So we're done. There's nothing to do on step one on this one, right? Step one is remove outside stuff. In other words, get the absolute value alone. It is alone. There's nothing outside the absolute value. So we're done with step one. So step two is the removal. Remove the absolute values. Right, I'm going to remove the absolute value symbols. What happens when you remove, yank off the absolute value symbols? Positive the right side. Right, we should go back. And negative the right side. Not just part of the side, not just the front of the side, not just the middle of the side. The whole side. Right? That's the pattern. So we've got to be faithful to follow that pattern. So, um, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say, okay, so 3x plus 4 is positive the whole right side. Right? And I don't change that sign in the middle. I just put a plus in the front of the whole right side. Or negative the whole right side. Now, how do I negate? How do I apply a negative? to the whole right side, like this. Put a negative front, and then he'll distribute, and he'll change both those signs, negative x plus 7, huh? Does that make sense there? Let me stop right there for a minute. Everybody see that that's really exactly the same as what I did on the simpler cases. It's just a bigger version. I put a plus. I, I, I removed the, notice, no absolute values. I removed the absolute values. And I put a plus in front of the right side. I don't change the middle. I don't do anything else. Plus in front of the whole right side. And negative in front of the whole right side. That's why I brought in the parentheses, because that way the negative will affect the whole right side, huh? And then that negative distributes to both of those. Changing all the signs on the right side. That's how you negate the whole right side. You change both signs, right? I didn't change any signs there. Is that good? Is that making sense? Then you just solve them both. So now it's just normal solving. Here's a wall and here's a wall. And X wants to be alone. We got the absolute values are out of there. So we're just back to normal, normal solving. So what do I do to get X alone? I'm looking over here. This one. What do I do to get X alone? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't you don't um, want the X's on two sides. So I'm not even thinking about the four and the negative seven right now. That's not really what's important to me. I'll get there in a minute. But first, I'm thinking about the 3x and the x. We don't want x's on both sides. And you get rid of one of them, huh? So, yeah, subtract x from both sides. Or you could subtract 3x. It works either way. Get rid of that. So 2x plus 4 is minus 7. Bring down that minus 7. Then x, just keep going, get x alone now. Subtract the 4. And so... 
2 x is minus 11. Last step. Divide by 2 x is minus 11 halves. Mm -hmm. Good so far. Mm -hmm. And now on the other side, let's do the same thing. We want to want to get x alone. So we have x's on opposite sides. So we got to get rid of one of them. What would get rid of one of these x's? What would get rid of that minus x, for example? Yeah, yeah add an x. Just do the opposite, huh? And that gets rid of it. Add an x to both sides. And so then this is 4x plus 4 is 7. Is that good to there so far? And then, then we just keep going to get x alone. Subtract 4. And last step, divide by 4. So 3 fourths and minus 11 halves. That's the answers on the back, hopefully. Yeah. Is that good on that one? Everybody see that? Yeah. So when you have a problem with two absolute values, you're only going to always work with the right, make adjustments to the right. Technically, I'm going to show that way, but you actually could do the left instead. It really doesn't matter. You could do either side. Um, you would just do one side, though. So you could either adjust the left side only, or you could adjust the right side only. It actually doesn't matter. It'll work, be the same answer. Yeah, good question. Is that good on that? So, yeah, so the pattern we've been following is just the right mm -hmm. side. So you just remove them, positive the right side, negative the right side, and work them out. All right, can you guys do number six? I bet you can. I'll let you race ahead of me there because I think you get more out of it. So try number six if you have not already. 2a plus 4. We're doing your homework right now. I hope you're getting this down. Mm -hmm. This is your homework. I guess I'm going to do the all first eight of them. I'll, I'll skip eventually, I think. <laughs> so try that one. Okay, we doing okay? So uh, step one, it's not needed, huh? Step one, um, not needed already um, alone. The absolute values are already alone. So step two, so st oops, step two, we do the removal. So in the removal step, um, so you're just gonna, I'm going to yank off all the absolute value signs, and I'm going to say equal to positive, or just normal, you don't need to put a plus sign there, just normal the right side, or negative the whole right side like that. Good so far, positive and negative the whole right side, does that make sense? And I removed them, right, there's no absolute values, that was the... Step two was the removal. The removal step. So it's positive, no more absolute values, and it's positive and negative the whole right side. And then, then we can solve from there. Now how do we how do we solve this one? What do you do when you have the A's on both sides? To get rid of one of them. Does, you can get rid of the lower if you want to get rid of the two A. You could get rid of the three A. It'd be fine either way. It'll work out just fine. And we get, what do we get here, um, 1a minus 1, and then add the 1, and we get 5 is a, so a is 5, that's one of our answers. And then the other one, i got to distribute that minus, don't I? 
So we get, because I got to change all the signs on the right. That's how I negate the whole right side. And then um, you, can, you can add 3A to both sides. I usually just do the opposite of the lower one, but you don't have to. It, it'll work either way. You could subtract 2A from both sides. That'd work too. Just get rid of somebody. Just do the opposite of somebody, and it'll all be good. Am I making sense? Do the opposite of one of the A terms. And it'll be good. It'll work out. So 5A plus 4. What's that? 1. And then subtract 4 from both sides. Last step. Divide by 5. So there we go. 5 is one answer and negative 3 fifths is the other. Questions I can answer on that? Is that good? You guys good? You all racing ahead? That's good. I mean, it's all making sense. Seven's going to do something weird. One of the two sides will drop out. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, and then number eight's got fractions. I would just, on number eight, I'd multiply through by four right away. So let me, let me show you. So we good with this one? I flash off this one. Questions on number six. It's all good there. So just remove them, positive and negative the right side. Okay. So number seven. Okay, yeah, so same kind of thing. Remove them. I'm just going to write step two, right? right? Right straight to step two. Step one, already alone. S skip step one, already alone. Step two, oops. step two is the removal. So I'll do that. So here we go. So 5 minus P equals positive the right side, or 5 minus P is negative the right side. Good, and then, um, then so i got to solve for P here. So again, what do you do when you have the letter? Again, fo focus on the letters first off. Don't worry about the 5 and the 8 right now. Do the letters first. You just do the opposite. I usually do the opposite of the lower one. Either one, though, really. Just do the opposite of one of the letters. I'll do the opposite of the lower one. Opposite of negative P is lower. I'll do the opposite of that plus P. But you've got to do the same thing to both sides to keep the balance, right? If they were equal before, you treat them the same. They'll still be equal. P's cancel. Five. And then what is P plus P? 2P, huh? The other P's cancels, but the, this side's 2P. And then keep going. And then subtract 8 from both sides. What's that? Negative 3. It's 2p. And last step to get p alone. So negative 3 halves. Turns out that's going to be the only answer. The other side's going to choke. I'll show you. So distribute the minus on the other side. And we get minus p minus 8. Looks all good so far. Nothing seems too weird. But then when we go to get the p's alone and we like add p to both sides. They like suddenly both vanish, and all we have is 5 and negative 8. We've got no more letters. This is no. There's nothing more coming out of that side. The letters vanish. There's no way to make this side true. This side's impossible to be made true. There's no way to make that true. So the only answer is the negative 3 halves. Mm -hmm. that good? Yeah. Good question. Really good question. Um, let's, yeah, does everybody hear her question first off? It's a good one. She said, you know, absolute value is supposed to be positive, and this has got minus, so why don't we make that plus? Why are you letting absolute value be minus when it's always supposed to be plus? I'll show you with numbers, but briefly, and then I'll go in deeply. Briefly, the answer is subtractions in the middle don't determine if a whole expression is positive or negative. Let me show you what I mean. If I have 5 minus P, is, that, is 5 minus P positive or negative? And the answer is I have no idea because I don't know what P is. 
You see, you can't just look at that sign in the middle and go, oh, this is a negative thing, and if you want to make it positive, you change the sign in the middle. No, that's not true, right? I don't know what P is, right? For, for example, what if P is 3? Well, then this is, right, P is a variable. It's unknown to me. So that would be 5 minus 3. That would be 2. That would already be positive. 5 minus P as a whole expression might be something positive like 2 if P happens to be 3. But if, on the other hand, P happens to be something like 7, I just don't know. Then 5 minus 7 is negative 2, and this whole expression is actually a negative expression. It's negative 2 if P happens to be 7. The fact is, I just don't know. And by changing the sign in the middle, that doesn't really change the sign of the whole expression. Do you see that, right? Because if you go 5 plus P, that's not really the opposite of 5 minus P. That's just something different. So that, that's a good question. Does that make sense on that? How this, so you can't just change signs in the middle, huh? The way we change the sign of an expression is we change the sign in the front, positive or negative, to the whole, and that distributes and changes all the signs, doesn't it? On that, good, good. So for the negative part of that equation, um, 5 does not equal negative 8, or is there no solution? Uh, yeah, the, all that means is out of this side, there's no letter you could plug in for P, no number that could be put in for P that would ever make this true. How do you want us to indicate our answer? Do you want us to put some no solution, or do you want us to oh, put just, 5 does not equal negative 8? You don't need to write anything about this at all. This is just the answer right here. Okay, fine. That's all I need. You want to see my work? Okay. No, no, I want to see this. Okay. But you d it, it does not come into the answer. All right, let's keep going. Number 8. So number 8 has got fractions, and I know that you probably want to get rid of the fractions, and so do I. We get rid of fractions whenever we can. Yeah, just get them out of there. I wouldn't even take one step with absolute values or anything. I would just right now, before anything, just get them out of there. What will get them out of there? Four. Multiply by the common denominator, which is four, because we have a two and we have a four. And so they both go into four, right? Four is the common denominator for two and four. So yeah, just use four. And you know how that works, right? You just multiply top, 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 all of them. So just multiply by 4, multiply by 4, multiply by 4, and multiply by 4. And then cancel. 2 goes into 4, 2 times, so it's absolute value 2x minus 20 equals absolute, and these cancel, 1x plus 12. See, I got rid of all the fractions. I just multiplied through by 4. Got rid of all the cross cancelled and multiplied whatever was left over. Everybody see the cross cancelling there? 2 goes into 4, 2 times 2x. Is that good? And then, now we do the removal. Huh. So now for the removal. Now we yank off the absolute values, and what always happens? Positive the whole right side, and negative the whole right side. So I'll say OK. So it's going to be 2x minus 20 is just positive or regular the whole right side, or 2x minus 20 is negative the whole right side. And the rest is just regular. Is that okay? Can I go dot, dot, dot? I used to hate it when math teachers did that. But the rest is normal. Right? So step one, just get rid of the fractions, and then just solve the two sides. So I want to go on to 9 through 22, which are actually a little more tricky. They have absolute value greater than less. See how things are about to shift? We're about to change gears there from number 9 onward. We have greater than less than now. No more equals, right? So I'll move on to that, if that's okay. And what I want to do is I want to begin with you just the way I began before, with just, just thinking logically with you for a minute. I, I want to give you, I want you to see that, that math is just following logical truth, is all they're doing. So just think with me for a minute. What if, um, what if somebody gave me this, just that simple equation? What, in fact, let me just make it number again. Let me just do the number in my head thing. What if I said, hey, I'm playing this game. I've, I've got a number in my head. Got a number in my head. I'm thinking of a number in my head. Okay, I am. I'm thinking of a number in my head. And the absolute value of it, the absolute value of the number that's in my head, head, not, number in my head, is coming out less than, that's less than or equal to 2, right? Remember that symbol? 
This is the narrow side of the symbol, so that's the less side. Remember how the symbol works, right? He has a he has a small side and he has a big mouth side, right? If it goes this way, then the small side's there, and the big mouth is there, right? So the wide side is the bigger item, the narrow side smaller item. So so it's saying the absolute value of some number in my head is coming out less than or equal to two. <laughs> so like a solid line back filled with everything that's less than two. What's that? That one, like on our math Excel, is it like a solid line, like put on the graph and then backfilled with everything that's less than two? Well, kind of. Let's, let's think, just, let's just think, rather than, you know, trying to memorize something, just, just be reasonable with me for a minute. Just be simply, what if your life depended on it, you had an hour to come up with this, right? You're locked in jail in a foreign country that's mad that math is not, not, not doing so well in the United States anymore, and they give you one chance. Prove to us that you are not one of those non-mathematical Americans will let you out. You got one chance. What's the answer? Is absolute value what number is less than or equal to two? What could that number be that would make that true? We just, just real life. Just let's go to the number line. Could it be zero? Could it be one? Could it be two? Negative one, negative two, three, four, negative three, negative four. You know, let me, let me just put a bunch of stuff on the number line. Let's just think it out for a minute here. So what, what's possible? What's not? Five, negative five, you know. Anyway, what numbers? So, so could it be zero? Could, I, could, could zero be in my head? Would the absolute value of zero be less than two? Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, sure. That's okay. How about one? Yeah. Absolute value of one? Put one in here. One, that, yeah, well, sure. How about two? Absolute value of two less than or equal. That's the bottom of an equal yeah. sign. So it's equal. Yeah, it's equal. Less than or equal equals okay. Yeah, sure. Could it be? Uh, could it be three? No. no. This is all no territory, right? It can't be three, four, five, any of those. No way. Now let's go the other way. How about? Could it be negative one? Yeah. Does that work? So um, absolute value negative one. What's absolute value negative one? One. Well, positive one. It makes it positive, huh? And that is lower than or equal to two. That that works, huh? How about um? How about negative two? Could it be negative two? So that work? Absolute value of negative 2 will come out positive 2. And that is less than or equal. It's equal, right? So that's okay. It can be equal. How about negative 3? No. no. Right. Because negative 3, if you put a negative 3 in there, it'll make it positive 3. That's what absolute values do. They make it positive. And then that won't be less than 2, will it? So this, again, this is all no territory, isn't it? This is all no territory. You agree with me? So all the answers basically are from, from negative 2 to positive 2, aren't they? From negative 2 to positive 2 are where the answers are. Those are all the numbers that would make that thing true, aren't they? So there's our pattern. So if you've got absolute value, and again, we'll do this just like always. Once we see the pattern, then we just follow the yellow brick road. We just keep following, right? No matter how big or small they make the expression, what's our pattern? Well, whatever you have on the inside, you put that thing between a negative 2 and a positive 2, don't you? That's what's true. That number is between negative 2 and positive 2. You okay with the symbols both going less than? That's actually correct. Let me, let me help you to see that that's true, if it's not already feeling true to you. This is the smallest, like a, ordering a soda or something. Smallest, the medium, and the large, right? That's, that's really the idea that's being presented there. The smallest thing is smaller than or equal to the medium. The medium is smaller than or equal to the large. It makes sense they're both less than, because small is smaller than medium, medium is smaller than large. That's, that's true, that's right. That's what, that's what being in the middle means, right? Small is smaller than you, and you're smaller than the large. So that's the kind of thing we'll need to do when they give us this number line, uh, when they give us absolute value less. Now, it's all going to change for absolute value greater. The logic switches, and we'll do that in a minute, but let's get the hang of this first. So does everybody see that pattern? This ends up becoming this. So that's the pattern. So let me, let me write it out more. So, so what, what are we saying? We're saying if you got something in absolute values with less, we'll do greater in a minute, but absolute value less, you remove them, right? There's no more absolute. This is the removal stage right here. See how I've removed them, right? There's no more absolute values here, right? And you put the net, you take whatever was on the right side of the two, and you put the negative of it. So this will be negative the right side, and then this will be positive the right side, and you stick the whatever, the inside, in the middle 
with two less than statements. That's the pattern, right? That's what's logically true. So, so when you have absolute value of some inside thing, less than or equal to, let's just say, the right side. So, this, so the difference now, everybody seeing the difference? We shifted gears here in number nine. Um, it's, it's less than. It's a absolute. Absolute value less than. Absolute value less than. So you recognize these on the exam we take next week when you see absolute value less than. So you go, oh yeah, gotta do it. You put this on a 3x5 card, you get a 3x5 card, you can write this pattern, write this exact pattern. What do you do? You, you, on the removal stage, on the removal stage, you take the, you put the inside in the middle, and you go over here and go negative the right side, and positive the right side, and two less thans. And then you might have more steps to do if that inside was some big fancy X expression. But that's the key logical step that results in right removal. So, for instance, our, our number nine... Or yeah, so we'll get there. Hold on, hold on for that. We'll get there in just a minute. But is that pattern good, first off? So, I mean, that's what you'd want to put in your 3 by 5 card, I think. I think maybe you'd rather put an example. Maybe, yeah, maybe that'd be more helpful to you, whatever. But there's the general pattern. So now I'm just going to follow that pattern. Yeah, so let's do number, let's get specific with number 9. Absolute value of x is less than 3. So what am I going to do? So what is this saying? It's saying you take the inside, so I'm going to do the removal here. We'll put the inside. No more absolute value. This is removal. They're removed. And then what am I going to put around that x? The negative 3 on this side and the positive 3 on that side? Does that make sense? Negative the right side and positive the right side? Negative on the left because that's the smallest. Positive on the right because that's the biggest. And what am I going to put between them? Both. Oh, these don't have equals. Yeah, as far as the equals bar, you know, it's just follow the original pattern. If they didn't have equals, whoops, if, if they didn't have equals, then we don't either. If they did, so do we. You know, you just, just follow whatever they had. So in this case, there's no equals bars, but everything else is the same. So that may, and now we're done. That's really all there is to do. Oh, no, they want me to turn it into a, they want me to turn it into the other, yeah. But so far, so good? Does that make sense to there? Now, they want me to turn it into... Interval notation. Interval notation. How do you write that in interval notation? That means all the numbers. You're on a number line. That means all the numbers. This is a arrow like here. On a graph. Yeah, like on a on a on a number line. That's all the numbers from negative three to positive three, isn't it? That's what X is. X represents the shading on a number line. So the x, the shading, is all the numbers between negative 3 and positive 3 on that. Yeah. So if it had um, equal signs and then equal less than or greater than, would it have brackets? Exactly. Yeah, do you guys know about the bracket parenthesis thing? So this answer would be negative 3, comma, positive 3, or negative 3. There's the final answer in interval notation. Interval notation, I'll come back to that bracket thing in a second. Interval notation always means left edge comma right edge of the shading. See how this is the left edge of the shading and the right edge of the shading? So interval notation always means left edge, comma right edge of the shading. And the X is the shading. So that's basically saying the X, the shading, goes from negative 3 to positive 3. Boom, boom. Yeah, if it said equals, that's exactly right. Do you guys know the difference? I can't remember if we've talked about that or we have not. If we have parentheses, they mean not equals. Not right on the number. Whereas if you have brackets, that means equal to, right on the number. So in other words, if they had had, if originally they had had less than or equal to three, then I would have kept the equals here, of course, just follow suit. And that would mean you could be straight, that means you could be, let me help with this. Notice both these are opposite. Opposite, opposite, if that helps. Right, I turned the symbol the opposite way, I did the number the opposite sign. Does that help? That's what you're doing in that first one. And this is same, same, isn't it, right? Same direction of the symbol, same 14, it's still plus. Everybody see that pattern? 
So the, when you do the absolute value greater with the two separate, the first one's opposite, symbol opposite direction, number opposite sign, and then same, same. Whereas when you do the absolute value less, the triple, they're both less, aren't they? So all those details you got to have in your 3x5 card and be precise. Good on that? Everybody good? So um, how are we doing? Let's see. I'm going to move on. A little bit. What should we do? Maybe I could jump to one of the really bad ones. How about, how about, yeah, how about like number, what would be best? Um, 20. Let's do number 20. It's just like 19. It's all the same thing. Is it? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. 20. All right. So what are you going to do? Let me, what's first step on number 20? Get rid of that fraction. What's going to get rid of that fraction? Oh, Multiply by the denominator, huh? Yeah. Whatever's in the denominator. Like that. Multiply by 3. So do that first. Whenever you got fractions, just get rid of them. Okay, so there it's normal now, right? I just got rid of the 3s. And then the other side became 12. Now, take it from there. Can you do the next step? Oh, yeah. I'm going to let you do the next step from there. Oh, it's a lesson. And notice what it is. Do the right thing on that one. Look back at the pattern. So next comes the removal, most important step. So on a removal, absolute value less. Question, comment? Um, I did a different problem instead of number 20. I did one where there's a negative that you have to divide, and when you divide, do the signs flip? Yes, which one was that? Oh, yeah, 17, 18, they do it. 16, they all do that, huh? Yeah, I should do one of those. Okay, I'll go back to one of those. Yeah, but you're right. When you do but, negative, it yeah. flips. And if you're in a triple, they both flip. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go back to one of those. I forgot about that. Yeah, okay, good. So I'm doing the removal. What now on absolute value less, that's the triple, right? That's the triple statement. Instead of two separate, you do the triple statement. Well, how's, how's the triple statement work? You put the thing in the middle, and then you put negative 12 on the left and positive 12 on the right. Both symbols are less than. Remember how we do the less? It's the triple. Both symbols are less than. Like that. And then it's a triple statement. How do you get X alone? Just add 7 to all three, left, middle, and right. And so we get minus 5, X, 19. Is that good? How do you write that fine? Is that going to be one interval or two? That's just one interval, huh? And parentheses or brackets? Parentheses because there's no equals here. Mm -hmm. So just minus 5 to 19. Done. Nothing more fancy. It doesn't have the infinities. That's the absolute value greater when you end up with the two intervals with the U in the middle and the infinities, huh? That's the greater that does that. Greater number of sections. Two intervals. Less has less. Just one interval. No infinities. Good. So let's jump back. Let's do, how about we do number 17? Because I want to do a greater one. Oh, no, you want to see the less than problem, huh? So, um, okay, let's do, yeah, let's do 17, 18. Let's jump back and do, so I'm going to end up doing them all almost. And we won't even finish the next section. No, I'm going to have to move into that next section. All right. Oh, yeah, we go to 10 after, huh? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So, um, 9 minus 4x. Yeah, let's jump back to 17. I forgot about that extra little trick. Thanks for the reminder. Let's try that one. Absolute value greater. So now this one's greater. It's not less. So it's the other pattern. It's the two separate. It's not the triple. It's the two separate. Where you do opposite, opposite, same, same.
So, for absolute value greater, this is greater, we have the two separate, don't we? 9 minus 4, two separate ones, instead of the big triple with the 9 minus 4 in the middle, it's two separate. And, what, and how do the signs are so, so important? This is the removal stage here. So, so far, what do you do? You take that sign the way it was, and you do the opposite, the opposite. So you turn it the other way, and you do the opposite of 14, negative 14. Is that good? Or, then the other side, you do same, same. Keep it the same way it was, and the same, you know, you fit, this is all the same. Greater than or equal to 14, same thing. Greater than or equal to 14. Did everybody see that? See that pattern? It's all about the patterns. That's what you're doing in math and science classes. You're just learning to follow the pattern very precisely. See that pattern? Then you just solve both those. Oh, but that's the part I want to show you, huh? <laughs> yeah, because you're going to divide by the name. I want to say, yeah, it's nothing. That's why we came here. Is because uh, they're going to you're going to divide it by negative and symbols flip, right? So let's do that. So subtract nine from both sides, and then you get negative four x less than or equal to what's that minus twenty three, and then you're going to divide by negative four. Remember what happens when you divide by a negative? Flips it. So I cross that off and flip it the other way, because when you divide by a negative, you flip. Right? Remember that when divide by negative flip flip that symbol so divide both sides by negative x greater than and two negatives make positive 23 fourths other side same kind of thing subtract 9 from both sides what's that 5 divide by Four. Oh, I just divided by a negative again. So flip the symbol the other way. So we get x less than or equal to minus five fourths. So there's our two answers. Now you can, if it's confusing for you, feel free to go to a number line. You don't have to. This is an absolute value greater problem. So are we going to have one interval? Or two separate intervals with the infinities? Two, right? Greater is more. Two intervals with the infinities. So if you want, you could just say, look, I know, I know how the answer is going to go. I know the pattern. It's just going to be negative infinity on this side and regular infinity on that side. You're right. A U in the middle. Um, oh, brackets. This, these have equals bars, so it would be brackets, right, by the numbers, anyway, not by the infinities. And then you just put in the two numbers. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And then, but careful, the negative yeah, one that's gonna go on the other has side. to go over here. Yeah. And the positive one goes over here. So you couldn't put it in the order bracket 23 fourths infinity parentheses. You couldn't do it like opposite of that? The answer? Do you mean move this whole thing yeah. over there? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. okay. You can't. Yeah, you can't do other manipulations, but that's okay, yeah. The 23 fourths has to be with a positive infinity. That's what I mean. Wherever it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. it has to be in a negative infinity. It has to be with a negative 5 fourths. Okay. Does that make sense? Everybody see that? And you might think, you mean, Mr. and the negative always has to go with the negative. I, I don't mean that. That's not the reason why. They could have both been positive answers. It's because this is the less one. That's why. He's less, so he has to go down to negative infinity because he's less. He has to be the less side. That's why. And the other one's greater. He has to go to positive infinity. That's why. So there we go. Is that good on that? And then maybe we should do number 18. It's going to do the same thing. So why don't you try number 18. Similar, slightly different.
So 18 is absolute value less, less. So absolute value less, that's the triple, huh? So in the removal stage, removal stage, we put the uh, 3 minus 4x in the middle, and we put negative 21 on the left and positive 21 on the right, and both less than, huh? The, the important on the direction, both are less than. It's not one less, one greater. Both are less, because that's small, medium, large. Small is smaller than medium, medium is smaller than large. That's what it means to be a triple. And then you just solve, but that's part I wanted to show you. So what's, everybody good to there? So that's the removal stage. It's absolute value less, so it becomes the triple instead of the two separate. Okay, what's my first, now X, we're trying to get X and X, and I won't be alone. Get rid of this 3 and this negative 4, so I can be alone. So first I'll subtract 3. That's just subtraction. That's, you don't need to turn the symbol there for that. That's just subtraction. These are gone, minus 4x, so it's 20, not 24, I'm adding, what am I doing? That's um, 18, and this is minus 24, good so far, like that. Last step to get x alone, I'm going to divide by minus 4, and look at that, I'm dividing by a negative all the way across. So both symbols have to turn, don't they? Because I divided both sides of both symbols by negative. So both symbols need to turn when you divide by a negative. Even in a triple, they both turn. They both turn. And so what do we get then? X, and then on this side, 18 over negative 4. You can reduce that fraction, divide top and bottom by 2. It's 9 halves, it's negative. The other side is positive 6, isn't it? Because two negatives make positive. Everybody said? Yeah, so when you put your parent, you know, only one interval, right? Absolute value less doesn't have two intervals with the U and the infinity, it just has one interval. Simpler. It only ends up being absolute value more by default, right? It, the signs change, so it turns into more. No. Um, so let me do this first. So, so left side, right side, left side, right side is the final answer. So this one's the left one, he's the lowest one. Right? He's lower. This one's higher. It's got to it's gotta go left, right. It's got to go from smaller to bigger. You're saying all the answers are from negative 9 halves to positive 6. Yeah, if you're confused about this statement, you could put it on a number line to see that it is actually saying what is true. If you put negative 9 halves here and positive 6 there, it's saying all the numbers between negative x, the shading, you don't have to do this, but if you want to see why it's saying that and it's true, it's saying x is all the numbers between negative 9 halves and positive 6. Meaning what? x is bigger than negative 9 halves to the right of negative 9 halves. And x is smaller than, x is smaller than positive 6. x is left of positive 6. So it's true. That's what it's saying. It's this. This is all we need. All right. Have you had enough of that? That's a lot of those, huh? Um, don't forget, let me just say this real quick, and I'm not going to do the whole problem, but on number 22, there is a trick there that on number... Whoops, whoops I'm not even writing all number 22 yet. Um, on number 22, it's got a trick. What's the first step on 22? Yeah, you got to get rid of that. We hadn't, we haven't had to do that for a long time. But remember, you got to get before you do any of that stuff we've been doing on all these other problems. You got to get rid of that absolute value first. I'm sorry, not get rid. Get get rid of the numbers. Get the absolute value alone. That's what I should say. You got to get that absolute value alone, right? What's that seven? And then, then you would do the removal. So don't be tricked. You can't do the removal on step one. That's the. It's been a long time since we've had to wait to do the removal step. We did that in the first eight problems, but then we didn't do it for like ten problems in a row. Right? Notice you have to first get it alone, then do the removal. When you do the removal, this is less, so that's going to be the triple, negative seven, positive seven.